Yep, looks okay. good. All right. So I'm excited to be here and to you know share information today on for this DD awareness event. Um, my name is Donald Clark. I am the program development specialist at the Department of Disability Services under the State Office of Policy Planning and Innovation. That is a mouthful. And today I'm here just to talk about tech first. Um, as I always like to start out is with what is the problem that technology first initiative is attempting to address. And that is the digital divide experienced by people with disabilities. Um, as we all know, right now we are in the middle of the digital and information age when it comes to our society, which you know means that tech and digital info is the cornerstone of our everyday lives. Um, tech is more relevant than ever and is everywhere. And we're seeing some of the most mundane items, such as our watches, our fridges, our toothbrushes, become these data-rich smart devices that assist the everyday person with daily living tasks. And with those items, they change at the speed of light. They're always changing and evolving and becoming even smarter every day. The problem is, is that people with disabilities are often left on the sidelines when it comes to, to accessing this tech. So we have an opportunity here in the district to bridge that gap. And we really have the chance to enhance people's lives to for them to act and promote their self-determination and be equal participants in today's society by using these tech solutions. So insert tech first and what that really means to the Department of Disability Services. And we're hoping to grow this to mean something to district partners throughout the district. And what Technology First is, is really a commitment, not only to expanding, but also diversifying the use of tech as tools by people with disabilities, always with the goal in mind to either promote living independently, whether in the community, home, or the workplace. So in our culture, as far as support planning in, these, in DC DDS, we really want to grow to always refer to technology as the first option when we talk about support planning and um, achieving outcomes for people with disabilities. Um, and, and some things we've done this year really to push this forward is number one, invest in our service providers to understand the best practices when it comes to person-centered planning around uh, tech solutions and really um, be those strong support brokers when it comes to tech discovery, matching, um, and implementation when working with people with disabilities to identify what their desired outcomes are. Another thing we really aim to do is uh, roll out a tech first web series, and we hope to do many more in the future um, that really showcase some of the tech solutions that are available to people with disabilities. And not only people with, dis with disabilities, but these tech solutions are solutions that anyone can use um, to assist them in daily life living. Um, they've proven to be impactful. And we wrote out the series um, each month focusing on a life domain from a life course, um, charting the life course framework, um, where we highlighted two to three tech solutions, whether it's focusing on safety and security or healthy living or community living and so on and so on. Um, the link is provided below. Um, I'll send this out to attendees where they can access and watch these uh, our showcases of these um, phenomenal tech solutions. Another thing DC DDS has really been focused on is how can we leverage the American Rescue Plan Act, Kick Rescue Plan Act to uh, leverage opportunities for um, to to launch tech first projects? Um, we just kicked off our telehealth service, which was really to address the health disparities people all with disabilities always experience, but was only heightened after COVID and really with the focus of mitigating ER, unnecessary ER visits and hospitalizations. Um, we were able to disseminate tech to people with disabilities to access the service, um, a launch a training, and we hope to really pursue this to be a long-term option for the people we support. Um, we also really focus on how we can improve our process for tech acquisition. 
how can we improve how we get tech in the hands of people with disabilities to use as tools? And we're looking forward to piloting an online platform that uses artificial intelligence to automate the matching process based on people's needs, capabilities, and, pre and preferences. Also, we really are focusing on another project where we're looking at remote supports and matching people to that and seeing how we can move forward with actually getting the tech to them, training them in their circle of support um, around those tech solutions to utilize remote supports. Last but not least, and most importantly, out of all we're doing with uh, you know, Tech First and some of the things we have done, one critical thing is that we need to always focus on community partnership to advance our efforts. Um, and you know, really looking district-wide of Tech First becoming an you know, initiative that everyone embraces um, and community really getting behind it. Um, and this is just a statement saying, by embracing our individual differences, the community receives greater benefits than that achieved through the segregation and isolation of people with disabilities. In short, the community will reap the same benefits if it works together to close the digital divide experience by piece of people with disabilities. And with that being said, we've really invested our efforts in building that partnership and really using each other's resources for the greater good to achieve check first. Um, here are some highlighted partners, DC Assistive Technology Center, um, which is almost like the in the district can be a spot where people can go to make informed decisions about tech, touch, feel, and play with it before they acquire it to see what they're comfortable with and what they want to pursue. Um, DC Center for Accessibility is another great partner who offers resources such as workshops and trainings around tech basics. And we're hoping to grow that partnership as well in the future. And last but not least, um, who's here with us today is Tech Together DC. Um, we have a lot of overlapping focus areas that we're hoping that we can build a partnership in advance efforts. And below is just some of those we hope to build on, you know, creating opportunities for discovery and learning. How can we improve access to that for people to acquire tech, affordable tech, and also receive the wraparound supports they may need to effectively utilize it? How can we bridge the gap as far as digital literacy? and give people the fundamentals they need to even acquire tech. Um, one thing is, is that we have to address the comfort level of not only the people, people with disabilities, but their circle of support, caregivers or service providers as well, because they are a vital piece to making sure that people utilize tech as a tool. And without all this, we need to address internet access, affordable internet, for people with disabilities so they can not, so we can close the digital divide and they can use their tech solutions. So with that being said, we have a partner here today, um, as I previously stated, um, from Tech Together. Um, Mr. Adrian Sutton, um, previously he did some workshops here at DDS as a test run for us. And we're hoping to grow this opportunity throughout the district for people with disabilities. So Adrian, say hello to the people and thank you for joining us. Hello, kings and queens. Donald, thank you for that grand introduction. Um, my name is Adrian Sutton and I work for Octo, the techie part of DC government. If you was a DC government employee and you, if you got like an email or your phone, then my agency would be the agency that will help you out. Um, mayor Bowser, our mayor, uh, has tagged me with um, connecting communities with technology and putting technologies into communities. Um, and some of the ways I do this is by teaching senior citizens how to become millennials with their smart devices. Um, since the pandemic, we've learned that it's been more than just um, senior residents that need tech support. Um, so that's why I'm here today. I'm here to inform any and everybody about tech support. And right now we're going to go over a very basic smartphone one on one course. Um, it says smartphone one on one, but you can also um, use these same tips and tricks for your tablet as well. So I'm going to share my screen and that's always a scary thing because you never know what may show. 
All right. So a smartphone. What is a smartphone? Well, a smartphone is basically a mini computer. All right. Think about your laptop. Think about your desktop and think about the functions that you could do on those laptops and that desktop. Um, for the most part, you could do all those things on your smartphone or your tablet. Some things are a little bit easier to do. Some things are a little bit um, more recommended to do on your laptop compared to your phone. What are you talking about? I'm talking about like filling out a job application. Filling out a job application, I would recommend doing that on a laptop or a desktop. It's just easier to type. Um, maybe you are applying or recertifying for like your Medicaid benefits uh, or maybe you're in school you need to type up a paper right i would suggest you know um, using a laptop or a desktop for those tasks other than that though for, for your smartphone you could uh, make a call you could receive a call you could send an email um, you could send a file you could record music you could sign a check you could cash a check um, you could do a lot of things on these smartphones now um, Think about some of the things that you do the most on your smartphone, right? Are you shopping online? Maybe you're ordering food. Maybe you're ordering a ride. The possibilities are almost endless with a smart device. Now we're going to talk about the nooks and crannies of the smart device, all right? So you have like your hardware, which is like your physical phone, right? And then you have like the software. And the software is like the computer program that makes your smartphone smart. So think about hardware as being like the body of the phone and the software being the mind and the heart of the phone. Um, so often when people talk about like Android phones or Apple phones, they're not talking about the hardware. They're talking about the software. Um, Android is a software. Um, you may have like a Samsung or you may have like an LG hardware phone, but most likely it's using that Android operating system. So when anybody's talking about, oh, I have an Android phone, they're just referring to the software. Um, and the Apple phone, it has that particular Apple software. So operating system, the software, that's the mind and the heart of, the, um, of your device. We'll go over some pros and cons of Apple and Android. They are like the two biggest operating systems. There is like, you can still get like a Windows phone, but Android, 70% of the world use Android. So if you're using an Android device, then you're, you're in the majority. If you can learn how to do a, work an Android device, then you can work any device. And I almost guarantee that. So let's talk about Apple. If you're young, if you're a millennial, then you have an iPhone. If you have an iPad, I'm a millennial and I'm, I'm sold. Apple has me. I will never leave Apple. Uh, some of the pros of Apple is that it looks good. All right. It's look good. It's user friendly. Um, the devices are made by Apple, right? So like the Apple runs the operating system, the software and the hardware. So everything is like in-house with Apple. Also, when it comes to downloading apps, um, Apple, is, they vet their Apple store. So basically imagine like a VIP list, you know how you got the VIP list and you got like the general admission list for Apple, for their apps, it's like a VIP thing. Like Apple approves every app that you could download. All right, so those, those are the pros. It look good, it's easy to use. Apple vets a lot of things. One of the cons is that it is very, very expensive. All right, I cannot sugarcoat that to get in this Apple ecosystem, you do have to pay some money. Another um, um, another con, another like bag or flag for this is that they all kind of look alike, right? You, you get limited choices for the hardware. Um, again, for Android, right? You could have like a, a Samsung, a Pixel, a Galaxy Note, right? And these are all Android phones. But for Apple, it's just the iPhone, right? And the iPhone 8 kind of looks like the iPhone 10. It looks like the iPhone 12. It looks like the iPhone Pro, okay? Next, Android. So Android is owned by Google, all right? 70% of all smartphone users in the world are using Android devices. The pros is that it comes in different shapes and sizes. You could get uh, the Obama phone. You could get a Galaxy Note. You're still using the Android. You could get an Android for free. 
You could pay a thousand dollars for an Android, right? Um, there's a lot more options when it comes to Androids. Some of the cons of Androids, um, y'all remember when I said Apple vets all the people who down that Apple vets all the apps that you could download on Apple. Google is like the wild, wild west. If you have an app, it could automatically go on that Google website. I mean, that Google Play Store, meaning that any and every app it can be downloaded on a Google device. But depending on that hardware, that device, that app may not work. So let me let me say that again. So depending on what you download, how old the app is, how old your phone is, the app may not work on this Android device. Does not mean that you have to upgrade your phone. Does not mean you did anything wrong. This every app doesn't work on these Google devices. Next, how to text. Now, I think texting is essential, especially if you're using this smartphone. Um, if you thought answering and answering a phone and um, calling somebody was this, was important, I would say texting would be right under that as well. All right. So let's talk about Apple. Apple has this green icon. It's to the bottom. Um, if you're looking at the presentation, Apple has this green icon. It's called iMessages. This is your primary messaging app. Okay, if you're using an Apple device, iPad, iPhone, iMessage is your primary texting app, meaning you could text your mom good night, you could send your boyfriend a picture, all through this app, all right, iMessage. Now, if you're using an Android device, remember Android gives you options, and you may have more than one messaging app, and, you, and they just give you those options to use either one, but I would just... Um, recommend using messages. All right, it's blue. It's this icon. Let me ask if you want to set it up as your primary um, app, a messaging app, and that's that. All right. Um, some some key things to know about texting. Texting is relax. Okay. Texting is not the same as an email. It's not the same as writing a letter. Okay. Texting is supposed to be fun, relax. Not saying that you got to spell things incorrectly but typos aren't uh, weighed heavy, okay? Abbreviations are, are encouraged. Um, fun things like emojis and, um, and like those smiley faces, those things are encouraged. Um, you must have someone's name saved in the contacts in order to like text them. If not, you, then you gotta remember that phone number. Uh, but let's stick to the fun stuff. Like text terms, all right? Some of you guys may have seen these, these phrases, and you did not know what was going on. You probably thought your phone was hacked, but no, someone was just showing you a little bit of love. So these are text terms. These are examples of abbreviations, okay, that you may see on your text um, bubbles. Um, let's start, I mean, let's do like four of them. So LOL, maybe the most popular one, right? LOL means laughing out loud, okay? Um, on my way, that's another popular one. I say that a lot. Normally on my way means that I'm around the corner, 15 minutes, right? On my way, O-M-W, on my way. Um, SMH, SMH is a popular one as well. Shaking my head, all right? Shaking my head, we could use that. If someone says something disappointing, maybe somebody says something real funny, right? You could shake, shaking my head, that comes a lot. Um, IDK. IDK is another popular one. I don't know. Uh, what time does this class end? I don't know. Um, and then let's do one more. W-Y-D, what are you doing? W-Y-D, what you doing? Me get what W-Y-D. Hey, hey, W-Y-D, hey, what you doing? Um, all cool text terms, all right? If you, are, if you are under 40, your goal, your homework for today is to write one of these text terms to an older person and see if they know it. If you are an older adult, let's use some of these text terms and text it to somebody younger and let's see how that goes. All right, so these are our text terms. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, and I have a bubble. One second, technology. What is an app? Can anybody guess what an app is? You might've been right. So an app is short from is short for application. All right. Do not get it confused with like a job application. Uh, app, an application is essentially a computer program. Okay. 
If you're on your phone or your tablet, every little square in your phone is an app, okay? So we have the messaging app, we have the settings app, we have the Starbucks app, Facebook is an app. Um, do y'all remember like www.com, like the dot com boom? That grew up from being a dot com to an app. Essentially, if it's a business or have a website, most likely it has an app. And these apps are just shortcuts to a service, um, to a business, uh, to a product. It's just a shortcut to like a website. So an app is a shortcut to a website, um, let's say mobile website, okay? Um, and again, every little bubble that's in your phone is an app. Good job. How do you download apps? That's a good question. So now if you're an Android, you will go to- No, she could just go this way, straight up. If you was an Android, and we put everybody on mute. If you was an Android, then you will go to the Google Play Store. All right, the Google Play Store is, uh, it's like greenish. It has a Google bubble on it. I should have put the logo on it. So if you're using an Android, you go to the Google Play Store to download apps. If you was using an Apple device, you would go to the App Store to download apps. And essentially these two app stores, Google Play Store and the App Store, is like the Walmart of apps. Whatever app you think you, you need, you will find it there. Some apps you didn't know you need, all right, you can find that there. So Google is to the left, that's what it will look like. And then Apple is to the right, and that's what the app store looks like. Um, these are popular apps that my senior buddies like. Now, I'm gonna talk about a few of them. DC311, for those who don't know, this is the way that you complain to DC government. If there was a street light that is out um, in your neighborhood, you could put in a service request from this app. Um, if you think you need a speed bump or if the trash men in your alley just aren't the nicest, right? Uh, or let me not say nicest. If you think they could just do a better so Let's say you need a new trash can, all right? DC 311 app, all right? Whatever complaint you could think of for the city, DC 311 is for that. A lot of you all keep up with your news, right? So may, let's say you had like an early doctor's appointment and you couldn't get in touch with Fox 5 morning show, right? You download this app, get your news, Uber and Lyft. These are traveling or ride share apps. This is like, if you need a ride somewhere, it's the new taxi, y'all. Uh, Uber Eats and Postmates is a delivery service for food. Um, maybe you want, you don't feel like going to the, to the grocery store and you want to treat yourself. You got this food delivered to you. Um, same thing with the Safeway, Walmart, Instacarts. They deliver groceries to you. So instead of getting like a single meal from a restaurant, you can get groceries. And then Facebook, let's see what's going on with old friends, things like that. All right. So we talked about apps. We talked about texting. Um, I seen in the comments, um, in my opinion, IMO was like a confusing one. Seemed like somebody's learning something today, in my opinion. Um, all right. So how to get online. So let's, you could download apps, but let's say you want to go to a particular website, right? Remember that www.com thing? So these are our web browsers. If you was on a desktop or a laptop and you was using a Windows, you would press that icon for E for Internet Explorer, all right? Essentially on your phone, these are your Internet Explorers. That top one is for Apple users, it's called Safari, okay? This is your primary web browser app. If you wanna to go to www.macy's.com or www.techtogetherdc.gov, uh, you will go to this web browser and you would type that in, okay? So this blue one is for Apple devices. It's called Safari. The bottom one is for Android devices. It's called Google Chrome, okay? Um, and essentially, if you're using an Android, um, then this is your primary web browser app. I know what you may be saying, but I don't use, um, I don't use the dot coms. I just Google everything, right? And I don't want to stop what you're doing, right? You could always Google to get to a website. But if Google is like to search terms on the internet, these websites will get you straight to the source if you know the uh, website address. Hope that was helpful. Okay. So some of these phones do different things, all right? 
these iPhones, they got this thing called Siri, where you could talk to Siri and ask it to text somebody or call somebody, right? Um, a lot of these phones allow you to change the, um, the text size on your phone, right? Maybe you have a hard of seeing, maybe you're hard of hearing. Um, these phones have um, a settings for those things, right? Um, maybe you need your phone to vibrate more. Um, we got things like that. Um, Siri is a good thing, a good um, feature to have um, if you just want to play around or learn something new. With Siri, you can ask Siri about the weather. You can ask them a math problem. You can ask them to like uh, tell you who a particular figure is. You can ask them who is Will Smith, who is Chris Rock. Um, also, um, they have a feature called FaceTime. And it's basically like a mini Zoom, all right? So Zoom has like a lot, lots of people on it. With FaceTime, it's just like direct people, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but don't have no fear. You may be saying, hmm, I only have, I don't have an Apple device. What about the Androids? Don't worry. Androids have the same, almost the same thing. It just looks different. Um, instead of Siri, you guys have something called Google Assistant, in my opinion. Google Assistant works better than Siri. Um, also in your settings app, um, you can could, you could find um, accessibility features, meaning like if, if you are hard of hearing or if you had bad sight, you could do things to brighten up your phone, make words better, make things vibrate a certain way. Um, yeah, so, so I know a lot of people say, hey, I don't have a smartphone because I'm not smart, but trust me, you could you, practice make perfect, you could um, explore these phones a lot more than what you think you can. Um, and I guess my model is don't be afraid to touch it. Um, so this was just a sample size of my award-winning workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are having a great time, if you felt like you learned something today, you could always find out more at, hold on one second. Um, hold on one second. You could always find out more at this website, and all my windows are in the way, at this website, www.techtogether.com. And you can just learn about all the good things that I'm doing, that we're doing in the city, like our Wi-Fi project, where we're bringing a, a free Wi-Fi to DC housing uh, sites. Or if, if you like this workshop, and you want more workshops like this in your community, we could, um, you know, Reach out to Donald and Mark. And cut. Great job. Woo! Ooh. So, what, did you, what did you mean you 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 didn't want to just sit and talk to a screen? That was completely engaging. Yeah, I, I, I saw <laughs> that, that so too good. late. I saw that too late that you was in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. That thank was you, awesome, Adrian. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. Grace, huh, you do a great job, Grace. Yes. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> so no, I think this is going to be a great recording, and and Allison's a great editor. So whenever she has time, she you know she'll send this out to everybody. But I think it's a great. I think.